Today we're going to take a look at a new high power VTX and some antennas from Gep RC. Now this isn't really a review, it's more of an overview than anything. This is far higher power than is legally allowed to fly in the UK, so as a result of that I can't really demonstrate that. But what we will do in this video is give you an overview, walk you through the power levels, the power consumption and share with you some thoughts along the way. Okay, so we have some antennas as well as a new high power VTX that allows up to two and a half watts of output. Now we'll come back to the VTX in a minute. We'll take a look at the antennas first. Now, as you can see, we've got two boxes, bit of a length difference, which hints at the difference in the antenna lengths. If we take a look, 5.8 gigahertz right hand circular polarized SMA 170 on this one. So this is pretty much a traditional antenna. Obviously right hand circular polarized as I've shown. Single antenna with an SMA on the bottom. So pretty much what you would expect. Ideal for anything digital, anything analog, anything you want to use. Nice long length on it as well, which is always good to see. We then have the Mamada 5.8 dual antenna. Now this one is quite interesting because it is two antennas on the same coax. So it is not two separate antennas on the input. It is a single antenna input, but it is dual right-hand circular polarized. You've got one antenna element here and one antenna element here. Now, obviously this is on a massive length of cable. It is 170 mil to the bottom antenna. So again, if we put the two side by side, you can actually see that the bottom antenna, they're pretty much the same, but it continues on up to the top antenna here. Now, alongside the antennas, we also have this. Now, this is their Matten 5.8 gigahertz, 2.5 watt analog FPV VTX. In the box, we have a few cards from GEPRC, which is good to see. We have some instructions, and it's an actual instruction booklet, which is nice to see as well. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then in the rest of the box, we will find the components. So we have the VTX itself, we have a big bag of mounting components, which is good to see. So you've got mounting posts, plastic ones, as well as screws. We've got two antennas. There's an included antenna with it on an MMCX connector. And then we've got an MMCX2 SMA connector there. So again, directly compatible with their antennas. Also in the box, we will find our cable for wiring to the VTX, and then we have the VTX module itself. Now, if we take a look in the manual, they do walk you through how to do all of this. It's just, some of it's in English, some of it is in Chinese. So let me just find the English element of the manual. There we go. So you can see here, it gives us all the main specifications. So we've got the power output options, so 25, 200, 600, 1600, 2.5 watts and pit mode. Input voltage, as I've said already, is 7 to 36 volt, 2 to 8S. It has an output voltage of 5 volt to power cameras, which supports 600 milliamp hour. It has an output voltage of 5 volt, 600 milliamp to power cameras, works on 5.8 gigahertz, 72 channels, supports IRC Tramp, has the MMCX antenna connector, and they say it weighs 18 grams. It is fitted with a 30 by 30 mounting pattern as well, which means you're going to be able to bolt it onto the back of most frames. Then down in the manual, they show us our wiring connection as well as our information for the configuration. Then you've got your beta flight setup for the tramp settings. We've got our frequency chart here for selecting our channels. And then you've got a QR code that allows you to download a CLI dump for installing it into beta flight. And then you've also got the menu options down here as well. And then here it shows you the options for the buttons. So how to control it. You've got your use your buttons to adjust the VTX. So you've got your channel, your band, and then your power output settings. Now with this today, we're going to use the Cadex Rattle Pro. Now this is one of their high quality 1500 TVL cameras. It's not the smallest camera in the world when you actually look at it, but it is one of the higher quality ones that is available on the market today. Now included with this camera is this little PCB board for controlling the menus and you also have your cables, your connections, your little Allen key there for connecting it onto your frame as well. 
Okay, so there you can see we've got the analog camera on. Now, as I've said, I'm not going to do a flight video on this because I can only legally fly at 25 milliwatts anyway. There is no point showing you anything on that. Now, just to show you how this Cadex camera looks in the workshop, this is a 1500 TVL camera. Overall, it looks really, really good. Not too much interference. Obviously, analog is heavily affected by interference. Actually, digital is as well. However, that's a conversation for another day. Now, I've got this set up through the flight controller and if I just put the camera down there a second and feel around for my remote, we have all of the VTX configuration options in via Tramp. So I can go into the VTX and control it through beta flight, no problem at all. My VTX is getting quite hot here on the bench, but you can see we're running it all the way through the options. We've got 25, 200, 600, one watt max output available if you want it. Obviously, you should only use it with the legal power that you have available in your country. Now, really, that's what I can show you here on the bench. Next, I'm going to show you the results of my RF power and power consumption testing. Now, before we get into this, I just want to be clear in saying, as I always do when it comes to RF power testing, that these numbers should not be taken as absolute matter of fact. My testing is done on my equipment here, which I'm comfortable is accurate in the sense of it's a true representation of the kind of RF power levels you're getting, but the actual numbers may vary slightly. RF power testing is extremely complex and it is usually done on very high-end lab-grade equipment with golden samples with known outputs to compare against. This is done on my equipment where I do compare against other systems and that's how I look for anomalies and things that don't look quite right. But again, RF power testing can at times throw up strange results. And as a result of that, I always throw in a caution that take this as an indication of the RF power level, but don't get too hung up on the actual number itself. Now, as we jump into the numbers, I just want to add that the 25 and 200 milliwatt levels were measured with no attenuator installed on my measurement equipment. The power levels of 600, 1600 and max power 2.5 watts were all measured with a high quality 10 dB attenuator. You always tend to remove the attenuator below 500 milliwatts because that gives you a more accurate reading. Using an attenuator below 500 milliwatts can throw you results. Looking at the numbers in detail, at 25 milliwatts, I measured an output of 120 milliwatts with a power consumption of 6.4 watts. This is a lot higher than the 25 milliwatt setting, but this isn't particularly unexpected to me. It's often the case that high power amplifiers such as the one here can struggle on the lower power settings. It may also be part of the calibration isn't 100% correct on this PA, but the reality is higher power levels at lower power settings isn't particularly unusual. It is somewhat expected, especially on higher power VTXs. Next, moving up to the 200 milliwatt setting. Now this does undershoot. I'm measuring 140 milliwatts here with a power consumption of 6.5 watts. It is a little low, but again, it's close enough that I'm comfortable. Jumping up to 600 milliwatts, things are looking much better. I measured 543 with a power consumption of 7.9 watts, and this is much closer to the number on the specs. Next, moving up to the 1600 milliwatts. This, I measured 1240 with a power consumption of 9.7 watts. Now, this is undershooting a little bit here. Again, this is going to be a calibration issue rather than a power amplifier issue. There's no reason at this point it shouldn't be able to be accurate. So I suspect the calibration is a little bit off on this setting. And then finally, jumping into the full RF power mode, 2.5 watts. Here, I measured 2970 with a power consumption of 18.2 watts. Now, this is an overshoot. We're getting nearly 500 milliwatts more than the manufacturer's recommended spec. However, again, that isn't a particular surprise to me. You will get variances in the manufacturing between each unit. You will get variances in the measurement. What I'm comfortable in saying is this VTX is capable of delivering the manufacturer's stated two and a half watts of RF output. Now, price-wise, the Matten VTX, which is up to 2.5 watts of output, is available for $52.99. And with regards to the antennas, the Momodas, they are available in various different versions, and they're available from prices ranging from $8.90 all the way up to $14.99, depending on the model that you choose, the length and the setup.
Now, if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. I want to say a big thank you to GepRC for sending these over. If you have any questions or anything like that, put them down below and I will try and answer them. There will also be a video coming soon with these antennas featured as well. So if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed. Finally, I just want to say a big thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make content in the future, please consider checking out the link below. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's donated. You're the reason we're able to keep doing what we do here. Anyway, that's it for me in this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.